So hello buddy and welcome to your next C Sharp XNA platformer tutorial. Uh in this tutorial we're going to be uh, just fixing some of the bugs that we had. So we noticed that our collision was buggy and I looked into it and I I was looking and I was like it shouldn't really be this buggy with the collision mechanism that we've inputted. Uh and uh yeah, so I'm going to be showing you some of the things that I left out and it should make it less buggy. So if we go to enemy.cs, what we forgot to do, um, just like in our player.cs, we have in our update, previous position is equal to position, right? We don't have... Uh, uh, we don't have that in our in our um in our enemy right so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna copy these two things right here and let's just put base dot update put in the requirements okay and what we're gonna do is go to our entity dot cs and in the update section we're just gonna paste this in here so for the enemy.cs at the top, we're just gonna call base.update from the input call layer. Okay, so that should uh, solve uh, one of the problems with it. And um, let us look at something else. So if we go to our tile.cs, right? Um, <coughs> sorry, uh, whenever we get an enemy a collision or or something like that we want to be able to change the the direction so i i never done this tutorial series in a while so we want to have i'm not sure if we did this before but we want to have a protected in direction uh, in our entity.cs and we also want to make a property for that so we'll say public int direction um and we'll make a get and set so we'll return direction and we'll set it okay sorry uh so now that we got that done <coughs> uh let's go to our tile.cs and uh where we have uh First of all, instead of having this uh, right here, we want to change this type of uh, collision. And I put right here, what if the new velocity is faster? So what's going to happen, let's say the velocity is equal to 1, okay? So we'll set our uh, position equal to, uh, I think it was supposed to be negative velocity. I'm not sure what I put there. Um, or it's supposed to be subtract equals velocity. And what what would happen is that say uh, our position was say 500, okay, in the x coordinate, and our velocity x was equal to one. So then it would say minus equals one, and our position would be 499. But say our new velocity was equal to uh, say uh, two or whatever. When we were to collide, uh, or something like that, it was subtracted by a, a certain amount, or so on and so forth. Or, um, and like, there would be a lot of different things that could come from it, and, uh, we don't want to go through all that. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna say else if e.rect.right is greater than or equal to rect.left, and, uh, previous, previous, uh, rect, Oh, sorry, previous right is less than or equal to previous tile dot left, then we will say that uh, e dot position is equal to new vector two, and that will be set to um, our uh, position dot x subtract. Uh, e dot animation dot frame width and then our position dot y will be exactly the same e position dot y and what we're gonna do is we're gonna say e direction or we'll just say an if statement so if e direction 
is equal to 1, then E direction is equal to 2, else E direction is equal to 1. Or if you want, you could say E direction, and if you want to do it in one line, uh, E direction is equal to 1, and then we could say E direction is equal to 2, and we put the colon there, E direction is equal to 1. Okay? Uh, and then right here we're gonna say if e dot rect dot left is less than or equal to rect dot right and previous entity dot left is I think hold on yeah is greater than or equal to previous tile dot left then we're going to set the position equal to new vector 2 uh, position dot x plus uh, layer dot tile dimensions dot x e position dot y and then we can copy this direction statement right here just paste it down there so uh, if the enemy is to collide with anything then the direction will change and since the player since it has nothing to do with this direction variable then it won't affect the player if the player collides with anything so what we want to do is open up enemies dot cme um let, let me just run this because i don't know if i modified it correctly but okay yeah so i modified it so that uh it um I modified it so that it would land on the platform just to see if the collision will be right. And if we notice uh our player is hitting off the platformer and going back and forth left and right. Uh that is because uh even though we change our direction, uh if we look at our enemy.cs, even though we change uh uh our direction, our um, our destination position is still, um, our destination position still remains the same. So what we're going to do is, uh, we can, we can do one of two things. We can either, whenever we modify, whenever we modify our direction, we can also modify the destination position within our property, or we can make a separate, uh, we, we can make something separate uh, for for it so we can make a separate property for it I'll just set it so in our direction property that changes as well so what we're gonna have to do is just make a uh, protected vector 2 called um, desk position and so go to our enemy so We'll make a desk position and an original position. Uh, so, original position. Okay. So, what happens if direction is equal to one? Then uh, this happens, and and so on and so forth. So this, uh, this happens in here. So, what we're gonna do is, uh, sorry. So if direction is equal to one, so if this is if we're going left, right? Uh, so we're gonna go to our entity.cs and sorry. So in our set function or in our set area of our property, we're gonna set direction equals a value. So we're gonna say that if direction or we could say desk position uh, dot x is equal to direction uh, equals let's say direction equals 2 so if direction equals 2 then we do that then we put the colon and uh, let's just go back to the enemy dot cs so direction is equal to 1 copy that paste that in there and then we modify the desk position like so. So let's run this one more time. So as we can see, it doesn't uh, 
do the same thing as it was before. It's just that the uh, the desk position, the range and stuff is not that large. Let's see if if we increase the range, uh, if we'll if we'll get a different result. So let's see enemies.cme. Um, let's set the range to four hundred. So yeah, once we change the range, then uh, it, everything works correctly as it's supposed to. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope it fixes a lot of your bugs. Um, so that's it for this tutorial. We'll get into some um, player and, and, and enemy collision in the next tutorial. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. And